Hey guys, Travis here, and obviously t this week has been really, really hard for wrestling fans across the world. Um, obviously, there have been a lot of uh, releases. Some of them made sense. Um, one of them didn't, which was, in my mind, my Kyoto. I mean, obviously, I guess loyalty don't really mean much in the world of wrestling, obviously. But, um, you know, for, I mean... I'm just gonna put this off, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna go on to the next subject uh, I made this video for. Um, to me, if I'm Vince McMahon, if I'm running the WWE, really, what is more cost effective to me? Because apparently, this is what it is: they're cutting back on talent to save money. Now, the question I have is, what's gonna what's gonna save me more money and make more sense? Firing a referee like Mike Kyoto who doesn't charge a million dollars a appearance for not even part-time, for like whenever he chooses, like Brock Lesnar, for instance. Well, that's going to make more sense and actually, you know, save you more money. Firing Mike Kyoto, who's been there for 30 years loyally, or Brock Lesnar, who demands a million dollars a appearance, to wrestle a match for like 10 seconds and then just walk back out. I'll leave that up to you. But obviously, we today I discovered the passing of probably the most legendary professional wrestling ring announcer in the history of professional wrestling, and that was the Fink Howard Finkel, one of my major inspirations to become a professional wrestling ring announcer. I've always said my top two favorite, uh, well, top three, I should say, ring announcers of all time, one for wrestling, MMA, and uh, boxing, obviously, for wrestling, The Fink, for MMA, Leon Hart, and Bruce Buffer, or uh, uh, Michael Buffer, for uh, boxing. Obviously, uh, uh, The Fink had been in, in uh, very ill health uh, ever since he had his major stroke, and obviously, you know, uh, that's a major thing that's been going on in my family now for the past couple of years but uh, you know I just want to you know a lot of people talk about their childhood memories of growing up watching Hogan and Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and the Ultimate Warrior and Andre the Giant and you know watching all the great matches in the 80s and 90s but one thing that everybody seems to forget was how you got so riled up in matches before the boys even got to the got to the ring was because of one man, and that was Howard Finkel. His voice, his deliverance, how he made you excited for um, uh, the, the the wrestlers coming out. Obviously, he was the first guy to really uh, adjust his voice to whoever was coming to the ring. Obviously, uh, one of my favorite examples of this was when in WrestleMania 6 in Toronto uh, the match for the Million Dollar Championship happened between the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase and Jake the Snake Roberts. When Jake the Snake Roberts came out this music hit everybody knew that Jake was coming and then he made his low tone um, for um, Jake Roberts because everybody knew that was Jake's character and he would also do that for The Undertaker he would do that for several wrestlers. He made you excited knowing that that match was going on and um, you know apparently according to the late Paul Bear God rest his soul and Jim Cornette in a recent shoot in a shoot that they did apparently uh, Howard Finkel was horribly bullied and horribly ribbed by uh, so many of the talent backstage which is really a sin because you know he just like me had just a tremendous love for the business and just wanted to be around it so we put up with it but unfortunately I guess he could put up with it a lot more than I did so that's why I left it. But, you know, it's because of guys like him that made me fall in love with professional wrestling. I mean, I can always say, as soon as I flick the channels, flick the channels, and I see that man with the bald head on top and the hair on the side and the mustache, I knew it was time to watch wrestling because Howard Finkel was going to be in the ring and he was doing the announcing. That was the main thing that made me, you know, know that wrestling was on. It wasn't the wrestlers, it wasn't the ring, it wasn't the fans, it wasn't the, uh, the commentators. It was Howard Finkel. And, um, 
you know, I became an announcer in 2004, I think it was, 2004, 2005. I think it was about 13, 14 years old at the time. And I remember um, doing my first audition as a ring announcer. And I remember the guy who uh, was in charge of the local promotion said, now, one thing I don't want you to do, I want you to be yourself, obviously, but I don't want you to come up with a very horrible Howard Finkel <laughs> impression. So that idea came right, went right out the door right away. But, you know, as, as he got older and he just started to, you know, slowly move away from uh, professional wrestling uh, ring announcing, I just think the ring announcing has just been piss poor. Um, obviously, the, back in the early 80s, WCCW had a ring announcer who was just the most unenergetic ring announcer of all time. And then, of course, Lillian Garcia came into the picture and, you know, uh, Justin Ro now Justin Roberts, I will say this, is grown on me these past couple of years as a ring announcer. I think he's done really well, especially when he's introducing John Moxley in AEW. But once he left, I mean, the announcers, I think they got now, the thing is, every single announcer now and every single commentator, they look alike, they act alike, they sound alike, and it's just not the kind of product that is just entertaining to me anymore. You know, I mean, I'm so sick and tired of listening to either Michael Cole or Booker T or having some generic ring announcer who I've never heard of before and got a voice that is absolutely horrible uh, announcing uh, wrestlers. I mean, that's the same thing with Lillian Garcia. I never was a fan of her, never will be a fan of her, just, just because I just did not like her announcing. And uh, Howard Finkel will always be the greatest announcer ever, and I think it's only fair that he gets the recognition he deserves after when he was put into the Hall of Fame. So on behalf of myself, I would like to send out a special uh, message to the Finkel family uh, and to everybody who knew Howard Finkel. And I remember probably the happiest time of my life was back in 1997 at the old Memorial Stadium in St. John's, Newfoundland. My mother took me out to a house show and I got to see one of my heroes, not even a wrestler, but Howard Finkel. And Fink, I know you're in heaven. Thank you all the years of entertainment, and I want to spend a, a special um, uh, love to your family. So just remember, whenever you think of a ring announcer from now on, just remember, the thing is going to be looking down and saying, I guess I left uh, the microphone in capable hands. I'm Travis Walsh, and that's the way it is.